Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, one true one God. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, the church began a new year in the church calendar. And it also is, in a way we can say, the season of the Advent began. We are preparing for the nativity of our Lord in that sense. And from today onwards, we read in the Gospel readings the narratives that prepared the way for the nativity and different annunciations and the events that happened just before the nativity. So today we just listen to the gospel narrative according to St. Luke, where the angel Gabriel appeared to a priest named Zachariah, who was childless because the narrative says his wife was barren. Sometimes it makes you wonder, how did they know it was his wife's problem? Because we didn't, I don't think they had enough medical science advancement at that time to discern whose problem was this. But maybe just as we listen to the Pauline narrative just now, they have to blame the woman for everything. But the interesting part about this couple they still persevered in their faith. For them, even though they were sort of considered disgraceful among their own people, as Elizabeth says at the end of the text, they, we don't see them seeking God to change their situation, like many of us do. We want to struggle, we want, the God, we want God to interfere for us, we want to change the course of history on behalf of us. We might do a lot of things and we want to change the result after we do all sorts of silly things. So here we see a couple, not, not because of anything of their own doing, they happen to be childless. And in the context of those days, it was considered a big disgrace to be childless because to have children, especially male children, that was considered a blessing or the blessing. But here, now, this priest who goes into the inner sanctuary where it is only very few people, the chief priest and the priests who are supposed to offer incense are the only ones allowed inside. He goes in to offer incense and meets Angel Gabriel there. And the Gospel narrator says he was fearful. No wonder. But then the conversation begins and the angel gives him the good news. And then he was doubtful and he was being punished for being doubtful of God's promise. And we see in the Old Testament even Sarah was doubtful. She laughed at the promise she had because these promises were made in the context of scientifically impossible situations even though they might not have advanced science like what we have today, they have enough knowledge to know certain things won't happen at certain time or of a human life. So here it's the same thing. Secretary is asking, how can these things happen? Because I'm too old. My wife also is old. It is not normal. And unlike we see after soon within this season with the Annunciation to Mary, here the angel is, was not patient enough to explain things to him. 
Zechariah is sort of punished for his disbelief. And more than a historical narrative, more than just thinking about what happened there and what will be the situation we have, or we can see about, oh, Zechariah had a child in his old age, sort of thinking about the unnatural things God has done. More than we have to think in terms of what does it mean to the human life or the society and even for us to today to reflect about it. When Zachary and Elizabeth were promised a child in its old age, in their old age, and when about whom Elizabeth proclaims the Lord has he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I had. But the later history proves something else also. Yes, she had a child. He grew up, was favorable about Christ, about whom Jesus himself said, nobody like him has walked on the face of earth. But what was his life like? We might have to wonder, did Elizabeth ever thought that I would have been better off if I didn't have a son like this. We all know in the gospel, from the gospel narrative what had happened to him. So having the child was really a blessing, but at the same time, the anguish this child has brought upon the parents, because he was a prophet, he led a life of asceticism, and prophetic nature. How many of us would like to have a son like that? When we, it's easy for us to sing praises about John the Baptist or even Jesus for that purpose. But how many of us would really would love to have a son like St. John the Baptist or Jesus Christ? Because we have to remember in a way, each of us have that call in us. As baptized disciples of Christ, we are also called, like John the Baptist, to prepare the way of the Lord to the people. We, in our lives, in our words, in our deeds, should be the ones who introduce Jesus Christ to everybody whom we meet. That's not an easy task. And Jesus never promised his followers anything easy. It is not about what we want, but it is about what God wants us to be, what God wants us to do, and how our life should be. So let that be the thought for us for this week. As we prepare ourselves to the great feast of nativity, to the to celebration of that feast where we commemorate again and again every year the arrival of Jesus Christ to his earthly life. It, we have to think about Christmas or the feast of nativity in different ways not merely about the lights and the shopping and the gift giving and all sorts of those kind of activities. It is about bringing Jesus into our life like what John the Baptist did, introducing and making way for Jesus Christ into the life of all the people, all the nations in the world. May God bless us all. Thank you.